three, <laughs> two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode two. Here he is on the screen, the big dog, Tony Warner. How you doing, mate? You all right? I like to chat. I'm mate. Okay. Good, mate. You finished that apple off. We just, uh, just you just done the go before, before we started picking out the teeth. A little bit in there, yeah. How you doing, mate? How's lockdown Damn. treating you? Lockdown sitting me all right, to be honest, yeah. Um, spent all the time with the missus and the kids. Just, you know, chilling out in the house. Um, just do, trying to do me, me, me um, service, staying in, you know what I mean? Just keep, I yeah. Look out the window, see if you crack pots from up and down. Um, but <laughs> get no, that in yeah? <laughs> you get that a lot in Liverpool. Sure you do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just said, you're looking in good nick. You was eating an apple before we started filming. You said, yeah, I've been in the gym every day. I said, how yeah. are you managing that big time? you got one in your house, haven't you? Yeah. So you must have pushed yeah, yeah. Theo hard for that contract. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's worth it, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you've got to have it, mate. Yeah, you've got to have yeah. it. Good to see you, mate. Right, so, as I said, like we've done this before, me and you, a long time ago, through the channel, actually, you've become quite good friends, I'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah, we'll do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Spe- you know, spent a little bit of time abroad together, a little road trip and all that. Still <laughs> road trip to Russia, you'll yeah, cover yeah. that as well. Um, so you joined Mirror in 99. Signed yeah. by, it's not been signed by Rhino then, Rhino and Mac McCleary. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. those two were in charge at the, um, at the time, don't they were um, joint managers. What did you think when someone said Mill's been on the blower? Was you thinking, oh, fuck it, no. Well, I remember speaking to Mark Kennedy the season before, and Mark Kennedy said to me, he said, look, he said, um, I think... Oh, um, he went to Liverpool, didn't he, from Mill? Yeah, yeah, right. he did, yeah. I mean, they were fairly close. And, um, and he just said, he said, like, I think there might be an opportunity down there at Millwall. And he said, he said to me, they've, um, they've kind of passed you by. So I like, okay. So it all it always stuck in my mind. Like, I was always I was always like wondering why. And then the next season I ended up going to Millwall. And I remember my agent um was um, Ben Roberts's agent and he just said, Look, Ben Roberts has been there, um, he's come back, um, said it was a great place, um, and he really enjoyed himself, good atmosphere, good squads. I think it'd be a good fifth year. I remember the time, another way you'd have kind of I, I don't know, inflated opinions of yourself and all that. Like I was coming out of Liverpool and I wanted to go to like a Div 1 team. Yeah. And um, they were Div 2 at the time. I remember saying to me, no, do you know, can't, can't get me a Div 1 side. No, he's going, no, no, you know, it's kind of, it's hard. But listen, he said, I think this will be a very good fifth year. So um, I went down there. I remember I had two trials lined up. There was the Millwall one and he had a, a trial at Berry. And, um, and yeah, so I went down to Millwall. And I was there, must have been there for about a week or so. And what he said was, he said, We'll let you know on a certain day, be it the Friday or whatever it was. We're going to let you know. So this day, this day came and went. We, I think we played. Uh, I can remember playing like I can remember playing some. I remember playing one game and then we played Tottenham at the training grounds, and Tottenham brought the whole squad down. It was like everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, was, it was at Millwall training ground. Yeah, I remember like Les, Les Ferdinand, Teddy Sheringham, and all that. Uh, was it Teddy Sheringham? Was Teddy Sheringham there? Remember Ant, um, Dan Anderson was there, um, but it was the whole squad anyway. I'm not too sure whether it's Teddy probably was there. Darren Anderson. Yeah, it probably was. Yeah, no, I, think, I don't think Teddy was there, but I remember Les Ferdinand was there, um, and I think we got turned over about two or three nil, but it done fairly well. Then someone had pulled me to one side and gone, "Listen, I think they want to sign you." Like, right, okay. So then um, went in and spoke to him and went, "Listen, it's going to be we'll just come in next week and have a, have a little bit longer to look at you." And I said. Well, we agreed I was going to find out on this day today. So if it's not kind of, if, if it's not, it's not found out now. I've got other trials. I need to start moving around. Do you know what I mean? So I, I said, look, I'm going to go to Berry because they've offered me a trial as well, and I need to kind of, you know, um, I, need, I need to find that. I, I need to find out. So I went to Berry, and I remember Rhino saying to me, "If Theo finds out you're going to Berry, you'll definitely not sign you." So I thought, okay, so but listen, I said, you know, you you you, you, you were going to stand on your word. You're going to let me know on this particular day. You haven't let me know. I can't be hanging around. I've got to try, you know, leave me options open. So I went to Betty. They were saying on like a a, a park. It was, it was terrible. Like the, the grass weren't cut or not. Oh, so you, went, you like, went anyway. You went anyway, regardless of what they said. Yeah, I went anyway, yeah, yeah. Thing is, um, if you went off and you anything stonewalled there and then you got right, you got to keep your options open. You've got to because you know, you, you know, you know how it goes. You can you can kind of pass that one by and then like the one might say no, and then that's gone and you're in limbo and that. So you thought, you know, I've got to keep your options open. So I went anyway, didn't like it, it was terrible. So um I think I think um they got a bit concerned and the next day 
after the training session at Berry in the evening time, Rhino said, get yourself back down. He said, we're going to sign you, uh, but you need to be back down here tomorrow. So it's okay. So I drove back down. <clears throat> and um, <laughs> I remember he, uh, he said, we're going to stick in this flat in Beckenham. It was a lovely flat in Beckenham. He said, we're going to stick in this flat. He said, but the one thing is, it's got no telly. He said, so you're going to have to, you're going to, have to like bring a telly. I'm like, okay, sound. So it comes down me telly. I'm sitting in the flat. No, trying to flash out a deal. Um, I think um, Theo, had, um, Theo was um and ah on 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 the on the, the money and stuff. So my agent's phoning me. Track and stain style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So apparently Theo's out in town somewhere having, having a bit of dinner. So the conversation's going on to me through my agent to to Theo while he's at the dining table, back and forth, back and forward. And you know what it's like. The last, the last pounds he had is to get in it, you know what I mean? That's when you're really fighting over. So um, I wanted just a bit more, and he's just gone, no, no. And, you know, and we're, we're like, we're breaking the bank or not, but I just thought, like, this is what I want. So I said, I said to me, it's quite well, enjoyable, that's that side of it as well, isn't it? The little, the little haggle, and knowing you've got a little, little bit a little of angle. Tr- little, yeah, a little bit of a stronghold. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is. You know, it, it's it, it's interesting, you know, it, it's new, you know, it's kind of new. Um, so... I remember saying, I remember saying to me, I remember saying, tell him, right, tell him, I'm going to fucking fuck off with me telly. Like, I was going to, I'm going to fuck off with me telly unless he comes across and just comes this little bit further. And, and you're going to have to send someone around to pick these keys up because I'm getting off. Unless, like, I find out, like, next hour or so, I'm getting off and take me fucking telly with me. So, um, the, 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 um, you come across to what I was after. I said, I wouldn't even mind. It was like, seriously. Not a word of a lie. It was like about hundred pounds, hundred and fifty pounds, something like that. It weighed that much to get to where I wanted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, he, he come across and, and he said, "Look, I want to get it done, um, done and dusted." So he had to tell his state. Um, and so was he like, what was he like for you? Was he obviously he's a, he's a very successful businessman? So was was he? Um, I always got the feeling when he was chairman, he was quite involved. You know, with the team. You don't obviously get that so much now because John Belson. He's an American chairman. I think he's a great chairman, but yeah. he's not, obviously not around. I got, I got the feel like the Theo was quite involved, quite hands on, quite around the place a lot at the time. Yeah. You, you wouldn't see him down at training ground too often. Um, you know, you, you would, you would come down, but you wouldn't see him down very often. Um, Hayden, what I've heard since I've left, and like only up until quite recently, I think he was fairly involved in not so much team selection, but would want to know what was going on, why, why, and. And um, like why people were playing and, and where they were playing and all that and and will put his put his um, his opinions on the manager and stuff, um, which I only got I was only privy to probably like the last four or five years, um, but for me personally I, I quite liked him because you know he was like he was shrewd as as most yeah. of them are you know but they have like a, a business model which usually doesn't work in football. I find, like, you know, if you're a businessman outside of football, that model generally doesn't work in football. You've got to be prepared to lose money, I think, in football. So there's got to be a love for it. Did you think, fuck me, I'm leaving Liverpool to go to Millwall? If I don't make it here, I've got fucking some serious questions to ask myself. Um, do you know what? No, it was. It, it was probably just a, a bit of... Um, like, when, when I went to Millwall, I kind of realised what it was about. And I got on... I, you know, it wasn't lost on me. I got on it very, very quickly. Um, pretty much the same t- the first day, I'll be honest with you. Um, but... Ego wise, no, no. What, what what it is is it's just it, it, it was it was a transitional time for me. So I thought to myself, I want to try and land at the highest level I possibly can. Do you know what I mean? Wherever yeah, yeah. you go. Um, but you know, looking back retrospectively, it was the best move oh, I've you, ever you, made. Spot on decision for you because you see a lot of players they'll start high, they drop, and you can fall very quickly through the football ladder, can't you? I've seen that happen with some some people I grew up with and played with. Those at like Lily Shaw, remember the old Lily Shaw? Yeah. Arsenal, one of them left, went to Bournemouth and just dropped through the, not, into the non-league. So you, you hit it and you, you judged it very, very well. Yeah. I feel said the same. I feel said in, in a different way to you. His learning curve was me a wall. And he thought right. every club was going to be, be like that. Brilliant setup, <clears throat> brilliant togetherness, you know, great fan base. And when he left me a wall for his second club, he was like, oh, fuck me. I realised what I had there at me a wall. And you, you appreciated Liverpool, but you, you, you know, you landed well, didn't you, at me a wall? It was sort of, it was a good learning curve at Liverpool, but then you was ready to crack on at me a wall. Well, it wasn't. And what I've done is as well, like, it was a good learning curve at Liverpool. And what, what you do is you take that with you. So then what I was doing at Millwall is I was kind of going straight into the first team. They were signing me on as a first team goalkeeper. Do you know what I mean? 
I thought kind of come in at maybe coming as a YTS, and I think, well, I, well, I know, yeah, he comes as a YTS, so he kind of done his learning there. But I mm. had to come into Millwall playing. I played. How old was you when you joined? 24? I was 25. 25? Just 10, 25. And I played, I think, 11 Mind games. You, for a goalkeeper, that's quite young in terms, and I suppose. Yeah, but, but I'll be honest with you, do you know what? If, if I'd have left it another year or two, see, for argument's sake, you know, it, it was the right time for me to leave Liverpool, and they wanted to get rid of me as well. But see, for argument's sake, you would have said, somebody said, I'll give you another couple of years, Liverpool, <clears throat> and you sit there and you're not playing at all, and then you have to go somewhere. You're 27 years of age as a goalkeeper with no experience, and then people start looking at you going, well, you know, you are just a squad player now. Do you know what I mean? So then when I went to Millwall, and I'm like, right, OK, this is going to be me now. I'm going to be the number one. I always remember there was a lad, actually, when I was, when I was on trial, <clears throat> he was a, he had a Jamaican goalkeeper in, and he'd, um, I think he'd been in the World Cup in 98. I don't know, but all I remember was his name was fucking Spider. But I think I've heard, I've heard, he, I've heard he drives taxis now in Jamaica. <laughs> his name was Spider. Spider. That's all I remember his name, but, but he introduced himself as Spider. Oh, he didn't, did he? Oh, he did, yeah, he did. Oh, God. <laughs> and he'd, he, he come, he come for him, he come for crosses, shouting spiders. I like, <laughs> oh, he was, and he was going like, um, he come like if he, if he nicked it, if he nicked it off the player in front, he go, Thank you, like just start taking the piss and that. I know, I always remember. So, hang on, this is at Mere Wall. He come on trial, yeah, a Jamaican goalkeeper, and yeah. he, he just introduced himself as Spider, Spider, and he come I'd... cut Spider, and then he said, Keepers, and I have it, Spiders, um, yeah, yeah, that was it, Spiders, and then he'd watch his name. He'd, um, he'd, um, I remember we, we'd have to do these laps, and he, and he was faster than me. And I was just thinking, oh, for fuck's sake, do you know what I mean? Is, is he going to go down and go, well, he's a little bit fitter than him. And he wore sackies as well. It was red hot, and I'm thinking, oh, for fuck's sake, this fella's wearing sackies, and he's smoking me on the running. I'm thinking, I need to, I need to pull something out here, do you know what I mean? But anyway, the um, spider <laughs> went, and then, then, then the, obviously, the, the focus was on me. And then, like I said, there was that Tottenham game, and then you know the, the, yeah, the yeah. stuff. You know, the, you, was, getting, you established yourself uh, under under Rhino and McCleary. Was you surprised when they got the um, got the old Spanish archer? Yeah, that was. And yeah, that, because you... how, did that, how did that feel for you as well? Being a, I always wonder how that feels for a player when you've been signed by a manager, similar to Neil Harris when he signed ten in the summer, and then he moves on, mm. and then as a player you're thinking, "Fuck me, I was fancy by him. He's brought me here." Well, you know, set me up in a flat with a big telly. Yeah. You know, he's fucked off. Like, do you feel like worried for your position and your, your future? Yeah, no, well, I, I think I think the, um, the 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 first season was was, was a good season. I, I was I, I remember sitting in speaking to, to, to Roy Putt when I signed on and um, he was going, We've got a chance, you know, this year. I was going, Do you reckon yeah? Cause I, I just I was I wasn't aware of the of where they played, uh, how they got on the season before and um you know, the plays that were coming through and all that. I'm just like, right, I'm happy to be signed on. You know what I mean? I don't know where we're going to go. And he's going, no, we, we, we've got a chance this season. So, um, um, first season, I thought, was a was a fairly good season. In fact, get, get into the playoffs. Um, and then the next season, you think, right, OK, well, I know what it's about now. It was my first proper season on the belts. You're like, right, I know what it's about. <clears throat> and, um, and then, yeah, the second season, you know, it starts off a little bit of wobble, but I felt it was very early. Um, that that the, it was after the Brentford game, I think. That's right. I mean, I, I remember it was, it was at Brentford away. I don't know why, but I was on the halfway line that day, and usually the, the fans are behind a goal, but they got a bit yeah. of shit and all, which was you know, so it's unfair. Like you said earlier, it is it is what it is at me, all wasn't it? But um, yeah, and, and they left, yeah. sacked, and then um, I sent the, sent the wife the other day. They did do well. You know, and we also, you know, they shouldn't have been thrown out so so soon. They was doing all right, steady to before them. You know, we had a couple of dodgy managers, a lot, a lot of change. But then, as Eiffel said, and you said to me before, you know, McGee took it to the next level. So unfortunately, you know, as, as tough as it may have been, it was the right decision. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it was because um, just just with what what McGee brought, <clears throat> so my management was very good. I, I, mean, I, I, I spoke so highly of him. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like almost to the point, he, a couple of times I thought he was like a bit emotional. Like he was just his man yeah. management was through the roof. Apparently, was was he good yeah. for you? He was very good for me. Yeah, he was. You know, he was. Um, he was. He was just very thorough with everything he'd done. 
Mm. I can remember him. I can remember him having an um, he was away somewhere, and he got like a list of the games, and he just goes like, you know, we need to. These are the games we need to win. These are the spells we need to get this amount of points from. And you think, right, okay, yeah. So, so what it is is you're not looking at say the whole season. Mm. And it can be a bit of a weight on your shoulders where you want to finish and, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was like small increments, small steps. Quite so basic, but quite. That's got you on board there, and it's like, right, we need yeah. this amount of points there, this out uh, of these sort of blocks of games. Yeah, it's, it's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. So, you know, so you don't have to look too far ahead, you'd have to take on take on board too much. Um, and I can remember him when we were dealing with um he was coaching up forwards and he was talking about he, 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 he talk about like near post runs. Like I always remember him saying, I always want someone running across that near post all the time because the amount of carnage it causes. Is, yeah. is unbelievable. Like you know, either you know, either get the ball because you know you 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 cover the bases where if someone knocks in a lot like a ball which isn't going to clear the first defender, you get ahead of them. He said you're pulling people away, you're pulling defence out the way, you're creating gaps for everybody else. So I always want someone making the the run across that near post. You think to yourself, yeah, he's a he's a he's a proper forward. You know what I mean? And mm. and he he's he's letting him, he's you know he's he's um he's letting it be known what he wants. Um, I remember we doing like shooting, and then like he was just saying like I don't want any shots like off the floor. I want everything banged in the bottom corner or through the goalie. Everything. So there's a lot of a lot of like good quality finishing sessions. Which yeah. Is, like we which scored a lot of goals in, in them years, didn't we? As well. We did. Yeah, we did. Mm. Um, and I remember like Lit both... a few. No, Lit in a few. <laughs> <laughs> Not as many as we scored though, which is which is always which is always the main thing. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, and he watched his names. Um, I remember him, like balls coming across the area, and he was saying like slide in and sweep them, up, sweep them towards the goal, mm. and like um, um, shoot and kind of like have, have your feet leaving the ground, put everything into that ball, absolute power. So he was he was talking to kind of Ives like that, Reedy, Timmy. Um, I was just about Stats. to say we had, we had the players to do it. Yeah, um, um, Chopper. Do you know what I mean? So you, so you got these players who were just like who were buying into it, young, hungry players, and getting this like good, good knowledge and good information. Mm. And um, it was just, it was just a perfect recipe, really. Um, so well, that's what I was going to move on to next. You teamed me up nicely, like the players in that squad. Uh, you, you were the king of the, of the the pranks in the dressing room, always winding people up. Mm. Uh, we spoke to wife, so I remember you telling me before a story. Uh, I've said that him and uh, Matty Lawrence were good friends. That's because they used to travel up together, and you you told mm. me this story uh, before, but not on camera. So about um, the, the car breaking down. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was on a match day, and um, <laughs> well, it didn't break down. There was a breakdown, but it went the car, and um, it was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, the car wasn't broke down. No, with Eiffel and Eiffel and um, yeah, and... Oh, okay, I thought that's why they stopped. I might know what that was. Matty had some kind of wobble or something. I don't know what it was, but he was like OCC, he was just, wasn't he? Yeah. So something's happened, and he's sitting on the side of the motorway. He can't, he can't drive the car no, no further. And I've just phoned up and gone like, because I couldn't drive at the time. And I've just gone like, Matty won't drive the car. And like, I'm sitting on the side of the motorway, and we've got a fucking game, and however long, um, like, I don't know what to do. So then I think someone's, I don't know who it was, but called, get up on the fucking phone, do you know what I mean? So <laughs> they've got Matty on the phone, or they've made Eiffel convince him, and he's he's kind of got his head together, and he's got he's got himself in, and they got in, like, before the match kicked off, but, yeah, there was some kind of, like, I was like, what the fuck's going on here, do you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, like, Sunday, pub, hey, pub football, boys, you've got to turn up. Fucking, turn up, you know what I mean? So he just, he just literally, something got said, or something happened in his, in his head, maybe, he forgot the fucking switch. Like, he forgot to iron his shirt or forgot to put the fucking remote control back in the right slot or something. Something like that, yeah. So, so and, that in, and, and Lawrence's head just went and he just couldn't drive. And just sat and just sat on the side of the motorway. Because <laughs> you, you said, what did you used to call them to? They used to travel up together from Brighton every day. Oh, the Brighton Bombers. Like, you'd be like, <laughs> like are the fucking Brighton Bombers here yet? Don't be like, looking at our watches and all that. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's what you wear, the Brighton Bombers. Oh, fucking brilliant. What was he like? You, know, you used to wind Matty Lawrence up, didn't you? Moving stuff and... What, what well, other yeah, players yeah, in the dressing room? That's a question I was going to ask you. Um, you spent a few years at Millwall, 99 to 2000, so five, five years at Millwall in total? Yeah, five 200, years. 200 odd appearances. If you could pick now, you're starting tomorrow, lining up, who's your back four in front of you? So you'll feel, you'll feel fucking best protected for that clean sheet bonus. Me, Millwall? 
Yeah, it, Millwall. Yeah, you're at Millwall now. You're lining up on Saturday. You're in goal at the den. Who's your back four in front of you? Just so you know, you're going to get that hefty <laughs> Fiopafetus clean sheet bonus. Who, who's the four you want? Play me your license fee. Me tell your license fee. Um, <laughs> who's the four you want in front of you? Left Matty back. Lawrence. Who, Sorry, um, Matty Lawrence, right back. Yeah. Daishi and um, Nethercott. Yeah. And Robbie Ryan, left back. Robbie Ryan. Can't think in my mind. Was they all in the? Was they all around the same time? They was as well, weren't they? Yeah. Daishi yeah. and Nevers played together centre half. Yeah. Yeah. Was Daishi decent? Was he? He's a better manager yeah. than he was a player. But well, he's say that he's more known for being a manager than he was a player. Well, yeah, I suppose so. I suppose outside of Millwall and some other teams, he is. Um, no, he's decent. Yeah, he was very, very good. Experienced, tough. They were both tough. Him and Nevers got the tough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just honest, just like we just give you everything. Do you know? Do you know like fat and round with them or not? But they give you absolutely everything. Um, no, they, they were they were dependable. Um, Nethercott, apparently he was he was really bad to to um, sleep with. I, I, I never I never room with him, but um, I heard some stories where he um, he wouldn't he wouldn't he wouldn't want, he didn't want the curtains closed for some reason. He had like a bit of an OCD thing. He just didn't want the curtains closed, and he's with dicey. And Dicey, as um, as I think it was looting away. I think it was the first time he played looting. I remember it was like a looting away. He was staying in the hotel. Fuck me, the, it's a serious budget there. Isn't it? <laughs> so not the rug. No, no, it's all right. No, it, it, it probably weren't looting away. I can't, I can't. Do you know what? Yeah, it's all good. Good point. I can't remember who it was, but he. Um, I remember it was like it was it was either early on in the season or late on in the season, but it was like bright. You know what I mean? And Dicey's gone up and just gone to, gone to close the curtains and Nether's just gone, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. And Dicey's gone like, like what? He's gone, nah, I can't have the curtains closed. And he's gone, what the fuck are you on about? He goes, I haven't got no curtains in, I haven't got no curtains in the house. He said, he's got a I don't have, he just said, I don't have curtains in my house. He said, I, um, I, don't, I don't draw the curtains. He said, I don't like it. And Dicey's gone, well, fucking hell, mate. He goes, because the, the, the sun's going to be cracking the flags about half four, five o'clock in the morning. I can't get a kick, what I mean? I've got and, no curtains in my house. That is a fucking... And they've, 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 like, kind of... They've, they've had to meet, like, it's like... It's kind of like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he goes, oh, I, I love that. Like, that's allowable. So he's allowed, like... like he, he still wants to see a bit of... He wants, still wants to see a bit of sky and outside. And Dicey's got away with just pulling them across. Um, oh, and then yeah. he'd always have, like... We, we'd be away. I remember we, I remember we went away to um, Sev- I think it was Seville. The, the club took us to Seville, and you'd, you'd have night terrors. Um, um, Nethercott, and you could hear them screaming down the corridor. I remember me and Bertie were rooming together, and you just heard this scream. And I'm thinking, she have been stabbed or something. It was like it was like a, a blood curdling scream. What the fucking hell is that? What I mean? And it was it was Nethers like he's just like. He, he like he just jumps out of bed screaming and just falls asleep again, or like doesn't even wake up, just falls oh my back. God. So, Probably so, yeah. dreaming, about, dreaming about someone putting some beautiful fucking drapes in his in his front room or something. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want them. Don't want them. Don't put them up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. you know, he sounds like he's got serious issues. The guy. Oh, now the cost has some terrible issues. He was a, he was a crack pot. <laughs> brilliant life. He was absolutely superb. Do you know what I mean? That's probably made met... him like the, the brilliant sort of aggressive player that he was. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. probably. Fucking hell. Hang on, she see the eight, eight stuff out there she was going to deal with, you know what I mean? It's all, all fucking Instagram and, and Ferraris <laughs> and all that. <laughs> it's fucking, it's real world problems going on here. People fucking not wanting the drapes closed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's fucking mad, isn't it? You don't, you don't think that, do you? You don't think at the time, like, you just think they're footballers, they're having the life of Riley, fucking out on the piss, playing right. games, getting paid loads of money, but you... You know, even things like injuries and not getting the team being away from home, it fucking can affect people, can't it? Oh, mate, do you know what, right? It's like it's, it's like just a broad cross-section of society. There's just as many lunatics in footy as anywhere else. Probably more so, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because you're all contained in like, a, a, like you know, there's egos to be had, you know, there's yeah, positions yeah. to be to be lost and to be gained and all that. Um, and it can be clicks and stuff. Mate, like changing rooms of a fucking a minefield. I bet, mate. I bet you fucking like again, it's sink or swimming. That's why you, you you chose to fucking run it. Otherwise, you could go under, couldn't you? Who was who was like the quiet ones in the dressing room? Ones you're like fucking. We can get into him here. Um, I, t- I tell you, who was a strange one. Who I was kind of, I, I used to love getting stuck into him. Was uh, Mark McCammon. 
Like, Mark McCammon, right? He turned if, up. I, FA Cup finest appearance, Mark McCammon. That's the ve- the one in the same, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> but, like, he was, he was like some kind of sprinter or something when he was younger. But he's built like a fucking door frame. He was absolutely massive. You know what I mean? He was. He was just all shoulders. He was heavy in a bar and was popping. He was he was huge, big, powerful fella and all that. If you're like, saying if you're saying he was built like a fucking door frame, you oh, are mate, an, you're mate, an I remember. Idiot, by the way. So he must be he must mate, be a big remember, fucker. I remember training on Calmont Road, right? And like it was it was it was at that stage of the season where you no know, they're like, you know, the throwing the sand, they're throwing the sand on, on the training ground and all that. And I remember he just turns up. So I remember like kind of diving into like diving at his feet and he's kind of stumbled back and I got like a gritty, like a back stud right across my face. And like you just think you fucking sweat. Like, you know what I mean? The size of you, you fucking he's massive. And he's just like he's just grazed, like dummy face, you know what I mean? Oh by accident, like. But he's yeah, one of them yeah. big, strong, kind of cumbersome fellas. But you could just get into his head. So easy, you know what I mean? Like he was like them three. And <laughs> You did. You did. You did. Rent free. Oh, like apparently he had a nickname called it Solly that that followed him round, and um, the kit man used to have a Solly, which would have um, he would bring the kit in with. So I remember putting his putting his kit, sellotaping his kit on the Solly and putting it outside and putting his boots in the, on the putting his wheel the wheels in his boots and all that. So it was just stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you, yeah. You could, you, could, you could get into his head easily, but it was one of them. He never kicked off, and I'm always thinking, you no, know, you take it, you take it to the line, you take it beyond the line, and all that. And you think you're fucking. One day he's just gonna go fuck off, and he. Oh, mate, you'd have pulled, you'd have pulled the buildings out with everyone in it. Yeah, that's how big he was. You know what I mean? I'm just thinking, like, I'm fucking dying. I'm, I'm dying with death, Adrian. But fuck it, you go, you keep going, don't you? <laughs> you got, you got to fucking stay entertained, mate, ain't you? Yeah. So like, obviously. I fucking ne- I can't get over never cuts. That that's gonna be I always title the video, and this one's gonna be titled Stuart Never Cuts Curtains. It's gotta be fucking that is outrageous. Um, it's, it's sort of from me a bit. Uh, but yeah, so obviously the promotion, the promotion season would have been your second or third, second, second. The next season we almost fucking done it again, mate. We almost went back to back. Yeah, and got in the playoffs again. Was yeah, you just, like it was just as a given. It's just pulling you through. Like get, yeah, get the feeling well, like you. I mean, even now you all talk about it, you all still stay in touch about brilliant times. Like socially, you had you were, you was as, as as together as much socially as you was at training on the pitch, and we almost went back to back. Was there a real belief that it could happen? Well, it didn't. Yeah, was, I, you know, I think I think we we found our we found our feet in by winning the league. So then we had that kind of confidence to go into the into the championship. Then and it was just like going to new grounds, um, taking on new challenges, taking on better players. Like seeing what we've got. You know what I mean? We're happy with what we've got. We're we're, we're happy as a team. Let's see what we can. Let's see what we can provide um, um, as ways well competition. Do you know what I mean? So, I think yeah. I think the first game, I think the first game was Norwich at home, and um, right. we beat them four 0 And you're thinking, fucking hell, it's easy this championship last. Do you know what I mean? And then, <laughs> this will do. Yeah, and then we went to Birmingham, got smoked four 0 So you're thinking, I got. I remember that. Else. This I could be a, this could be a bit of a roller coaster. Um, Lucas Neil, Lucas Neil was still playing for us. I remember that day. Yeah, he was. Yeah. We bought a yeah. green kit. Did we win a green kit that day? Yeah, we did. I think we might have done last year. Sure. Yeah, he played in the blue, didn't he? So, yeah. so, yeah, you know, it was like kind of, oh my God, you know, like that, 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 that's how kind of how, how competitive it was for us. You know, you think yourself, right, okay, fine. You know, you, you, you do Norwich, big side. You go to Birmingham, you get tucked in 4 0. You know, you've got to kind of, you, you need to step up, you need to step up a level. And um, we had a really, we had a, we had a really good season. Got into the playoffs again, really backed ourselves. Um, I'm trying to think, did we? Yeah, no. I think I think West Brom might have won the league. I think we beat them home and away. Um, but you know, like no one liked coming to the den, and we kind mm. of fancied ourselves going away. You know, even though we, you know, we didn't, you know, we didn't get every result we wanted, but we always backed ourselves the plays that we had. I think we could have could have played without freedom away because there was no even at home there was no real level of expectancy for us to do anything other than surviving that first season and to go so close. Yeah. I mean, like that, that might have been that might have been the thought process outside. I don't think we thought that. I don't think it was no. a case of survival only. Do you know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> we won the league. I, you know, yeah. I think you know maybe rightly or wrongly or naively, I don't know. But I think well, you won the league. You're the best team around in this division. You can't be going up to the, to the next. You got to have that sort. Of, you got to have that sort of confidence about you as players. It's, it's a it's a massive confidence game, isn't it? 
It is, yeah. And, and the plays we have, it, plays that we had, it was only going to go that way. It, we were never going to go to the championship and be um, cautious and be like kind of wallflowers and conservative. Do you know what I mean? It just mm. weren't going to happen. We were just going to just continue what we were doing. Yeah. Um, and, and whatever happened, happened. Um, saying, but, you know, saying that as well, sorry to interrupt, um, McGee showed faith in pretty much the same squad, didn't he? That took us up. Yeah. To go and show yeah. me what you can do in the pre- a young side, always growing. I think the only additions we made was was Claridge on a permanent. He he played the later part of the last season on loan. Obviously, we went and got Dion Dublin in as well. Two yeah. them two, Claridge and, and Dion Dublin. Two fucking. I was buzzing when Dion Dublin. I think Dion Dublin only played five times for us, but him and Claridge were, were good additions and probably the only additions to that squad. Yeah, I think. And and, and Dublin come late on. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Pretty much late on, it's probably about I don't know, maybe fifteen games score with reckon, something like that. What's he like? Big deal. What was he like? Big deal. Oh, mate, I was with him the other week at the darts. He's, he's top draw, mate. He's the just he's gold. I mean, yeah, I um, yeah, it's all he was right. And, and I mentioned this to someone the other week. Funny enough, I might have mentioned it to you, but I've been with like big plays before, like at Liverpool and that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and like up at Celtic, you've been with like some. Pretty much like superstars, really. Do you know what I mean? And big characters and like big men, but like I've never known anyone as big as him, as as, as like a, a father figure kind of personality around the place. Do you know what I mean? Just the aura, just the aura he's got and the yeah. respect he commands. Yeah, and and it was almost as well, maybe because as well, I was like one of the well, not the main players, like but like on on a like like one of the senior players at Millwall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he comes in. And he's pretty much senior above everybody else. Whereas at Liverpool, everybody was senior to me there. Do you know what I mean? So course, course, but yeah. he was like the kind of the obviously. See no, I said, oh, right, no. <laughs> I didn't say obviously. <laughs> well, all right, yeah. I'm taking the piss. I'm taking the piss. I'm taking the piss. I'm taking the piss. <laughs> but then um, he come in and we were all senior players. And he come in and he just like bowled in the place and was just like like dead respectful. Um really, really humble. But like, just brought just brought so much experience and quality to the team. Like he yeah. was brilliant. You know what I mean? I, I remember I remember um, we were training um, at Crystal Palace's training ground. Something was going on with our training ground. I don't know what it was. So we were training um, at Crystal Palace's training ground. Copus Coke Road. Copus Coke Road. Yeah. I used to take my kids to the fucking soft play opposite. Yeah, go on. Yeah, and um, I remember the finishing. We were doing finishing. And I just couldn't stop any of his shots. He was just taking the he was just taking the paint off the inside of the post every time. And you think, fucking hell. He's got a bit of fella, do you know what I mean? He probably yeah, yeah. I, I, how old will he have been? He, he played for Man U, didn't he? He started out at Man U. No, we started off at Cambridge and then Man U bought him. And then he went to Coventry, I think. Kind of and then I think he went to Villa from Coventry. Villa as well, yeah. But he was just like his finishing was great. You think, fucking hell, like, he's exactly what we need, you know what I mean? Mm. And, like, mate, when he had that Millwall shirt on, mate, he was an absolute killer. He just, he'd be, he'd be just flattening people, smashing people to bits, picking them up, shaking their hands, patting them on the head and flattening them again. He's just thinking, like, he's just the kind of, he's kind of person, exactly what you need, you know what I mean? He's just, he's just the soldier you want around with you. He's fucking oh, yeah. one in a camp, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly what you wanted, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, um, he just seemed, yeah, he, he just, he just be going through players and like, he, he, I just don't ever think I've seen him losing like that, you know what I mean? He was just, he was so strong and he looked, really looked after himself, dead powerful. Um, so, yeah, re- re- really, really, really big addition. I mean, to be fair, Millwall, we, we, we got, we got them, them older players who had played top level and we got them and they just had a little bit of juice left in them. And yeah. they had enough for us, you know what I mean? Like, there was him, there was Claridge, there was Wise, he was another one. Again, that's a testament to Mark McGee, because like you say, players coming towards the end sometimes could be looking for a pay packet, sometimes yeah. could be looking for a jolly up. But he got he, he made some shrewd signings, didn't he? And got the best out of those yeah. players. But one last yeah. push for them all, do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And um, so, yeah, so, so Dion, Dion, Dion was, good, was, a, was a superb player. I remember he was... Um, you weren't best pleased after the, you know, fucking hell, we were all, we were all sick as dogs, like, after we got beat by Birmingham. I remember him nearly pulling the changing rooms down. He was just, just lost his head, I think. Who, Dion did? Yeah, I think it was probably because he, he'd lost uh, against, um, against uh, um, Birmingham as well, do you know what I mean? He missed the fucking city, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It's good we can laugh about that. I nearly cried there when I thought about it. But um, he got he got equaliser at Birmingham away, didn't he? One one, took him back yeah. to the den. Uh, <laughs> Stern John uh, gets the winner. The fa- Dion Dion Dublin pulls the fucking change room down, and the fans pull South Birmingham to pieces. But um, yeah, that's that's good though. That's good to find, hear that about him because he was only on loan. That just shows what a good fucking pro he was, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he cared. He give a fuck that much. That he oh, fucked. he did, yeah. As good as it was under McGee, eventually things. I don't think. I think it's same with Harris. Like it, it got to a point when he just sometimes it just needed change. And I feel, I feel suggest the other week that you know the other day, he felt that some of the big hitters weren't performing. What did you think contributed to McGee's demise or the decision for McGee to to leave the club mutually or whether he was sacked? I don't know. Maybe you could yeah, shed I, something I, on that. Sure. Right. I, 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 my memory of it isn't isn't too clear. Do you want to share? I'm not even trying to dodge the question. I think it was we were we haven't just had such a such a bad spell, mm. and I think um, I think there was a little bit of involvement through Theo as well. I think Theo was getting a little bit too involved with selections and stuff, and McGee weren't, weren't really having it. So I think and, and was, with with Wise because obviously McGee got Wise. We just said you know he got in Dublin, he got in um, Claridge, and he also got in Wise. And got the mm. best out of him. I think Wise was great for us. Still, obviously, he was a, he was a top player, but still did the business for us. If you had a little bit, a little bit of ill feeling there, or a little bit of Theo, if you do get rid of him, I'll f- no, 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 I, I don't, I don't think Wise. I, I think Wise was just too pretty chilled, and I, you know, he, was he, he didn't yet? need to do that. He didn't need to do that. No, I mean? no, no, he didn't. No, you know, he, he didn't need to, to to undercut anyone or, or backstab anyone to, to get the job. So um, it, was, it was all quite. It was all quite. You know, McGee left all quite good natured. Oh well, yeah, well, as far, as far as I'm aware, it was all. I should imagine it was all above board. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, is is the is the 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 managers get sacked without 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 somebody on lines up? I don't know. Um, you know, it might have been. It might have been, you know, like he's going tomorrow. Do you want the job? And then you go, okay, well, fine. Like, I, you know, it may have been. I'm not too sure. If he's going to go know. anyway, someone's got to do it. So, I yeah, Wise took it, over. It, how was that? How did you get on with Wise as, as a player? Oh, I thought he was an unbelievable player. Yeah, like, no, I couldn't, sorry, I couldn't when he... actually believe how good he was. Do you want to share? Really? He was like yeah, 35 I'm... when he signed for us. Hey, he was 35 when he signed for us. Yeah, but, but he was yeah, always I'm... he was always like fucking nine stone soaking wet. So he was always going to be fit as fuck. Yeah, he was always like there wasn't a pick of fat on him. Do you know what I mean? He um, he turned up with me like I'd seen him before because I, you know I'd been a, a bit of Liverpool when we played Chelsea and that, and you, you kind of see him. You, you know, you, you, you're sitting on the bench and watching him and stuff, but, you know, he's in amongst, say, <clears throat> a lot of other top draw players in top in top draw level, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, do, do, does he stand out as much as he did with us? No, because, you know, he's probably got a fucking new dollar to the alley rocking around him and he's you know, he's, he's, he's up against red nap and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's good quality. Um, yes. But he comes to us. And the one thing I do remember about him, right, because he's always seen as a bit of a, a bit of an hard man, when he, mm. do you know what I mean? Like he was aggressive, you know. He wasn't scared of anyone. It's part of his game, wasn't it? Really, it was part of his game, yeah. But then the one thing that surprised me was how small he was. Normally, he turns up. I remember just thinking to myself, like, like how, how can how can you be considered that hard man? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, just it just doesn't it doesn't compute. It just it, it can't be right. Fuck me, I found out. Like you just see him insane. And he was just he just wouldn't he wouldn't be out to by anyone. Like for one, listen, you know the the, the main thing. He was a top draw player. The mm. quality he had was like he, he could he could see a pass. He was three or four steps ahead. I suppose that in itself, like commands respect. People go fucking hell, how good is he still? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it does. It does. And plus, well, you know, he was thirty five, and he still had the legs. He could still get around. Um, and then then you seen him when when he was playing. He was just nasty. He, he, you know, he was he was a part of the old school, like the, the Wimbledon crazy gang. They, 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 they were like the origins of it, weren't they? You know what I mean? Like the like lunatics and stuff. You know, um, bullying teams and that. Mm. And he, he um, you could see, you could see that, you could see that in him, and it was great. It was exactly what exactly what Millwall were about, and yeah. exactly what we needed. Um, so he had he had the he had the quality. And then you know he had he had he had the dark side to him as well. So you'd see him just ironing people out. You'd see him passing people off the park. You'd see him dropping the shoulder, lovely touches, twinkle toes, just skipping past players and finding like threading balls through. 
And then when it comes to a crunch, you just never seen back out of a tackle. And he must, like you said, he must be about nine stone. Yeah. See what the way many times, the way many times um, he was left on the floor. We've signed him, obviously. So then it's Leicester at home, minute. It's the first time he's faced him since since you know was um, he got sacked. Yeah. So I remember him saying to me, he was just going around to everyone because he was he was he was a calm, cool character. But this game, he just he, he could see Eddie's he gone. No, he went with his head gone. But you could just see he was like, can't fucking lose this game, lads, can't lose this game, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah. going around to everyone, like, individually, asking them to do particular things. He was saying to me, if that ball comes out there, right, to punch, he said, take their fucking heads clean off. He said, you know what I mean? And he was naming names and all that. Um, so I thought, like, sound-wise, he sounds sound. So it's then, um, the game kicks off, and we go 2-0 down after about 15 minutes. I remember, I think it was, was it Jordan? Was it Jordan Stewart who used to play from the, the mixed race fella? Yeah, it was, yeah. And he's cut down our right hand side and he's cut into the area. I he's left footy, I'm sure he's a left pegger, wasn't he? Left pegger, yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah. thinking he's, he's gonna he's gonna drive it across the six yard box and I've just leaned and he just banged it right in the bottom of the near post and I've gone for fuck's sake. Just after like like just fair there was a good side lesson than me, he didn't need to do yeah, any yeah. favours. So it was one nil down and then he scored a second. So we're two nil down now, we're up against it really. Fucking why is he's why is his head's gone a little bit now and he's um He's he's he's, uh, he's having words. He's not like I think there was like Elliot and um, who should have? Brian Dean. So Brian Dean um, has come flying at Wisey, and Wisey just touched the ball away. And the one thing why which Wisey was very very good at, he was good at ironing people out, but he was good at making it look like he'd been ironed out as well. Yeah, so very light good at that. and small. Looked, do you know what I mean? He sort of let the ball run across his body, and then get get a, the other side, protect the ball, and sort of con, almost corner free kick in the other. Yeah, he would, yeah. So Brian Dean has like took the bait, gone flying in, and Wisey has just gone flying in the air, screaming. Do you know what I mean? Brian Dean's on a yellow. Brian Dean, fuck off, straight. You know what I mean? Like, was that, do you know what? I don't know. It might have been a straight. I don't know. But Brian Dean's off anyway. He's off anyway. Yeah. So he's got his marching orders. Wisey jumps up. Everyone's probably all the Leicester players probably thinking that little fucking swat. I was over again. Do you know what I mean? But there you go. So then we've um, second half now. We've come out, getting a little bit later on. And I think Chopper scored to make it 2 1. I think it was Chopper or Clarich. One of them scored to make it 2 1. So it's, it's you know, game on now. So yeah. we're, we're on it. <clears throat> so they're down to 10. Got them, you know, got them on the rack a little bit. Anyway, the ball drops to Wisey on the edge of the bo- box. He just spanks, spanks it right past. I think he's seen Walker. Sticks it in 2 all. Wisey, like, fucking. It's 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 his dream, do you know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah. gone running, he's gone running right past their, their dugout, giving it to them. So it's like it's it's 90 minutes now, probably injury time. And the ball drops down and it hits Matty on the hand. I think someone heads it or goes to shoot or something, but it hits Matty on the hand, and it's just a fucking penalty. So Matty Lawrence is coming up to you now and he's going like <laughs> He's literally going, please, please, please save it. Fucking please save it, please save it. And I'm thinking, well, nobody goes there, so fuck off, do you know what I mean? Like, give me time to get my head together and stuff. So why is he now starts walking up to me and he's going, he goes, he goes, keep us left, he goes, keep us left. And I'm like, oh go God. away, because if, if they see you telling me, he might switch it, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course, of course. So, you know, it must be like, like I said, it's injury time. Anyway, Muzzy is a step up, rams it right in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm fucking down on it. And they hold it as well. And I can remember like jumping up and like screaming. Next minute, why is he jumping on John jumping on me? And he's swinging around my neck. He's not happy. He's like, he's like a key ring. He's like a little key ring on my neck, like that swinging around. <laughs> <laughs> but he's ecstatic, do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Cool. Matty's jumping all over me. That must have felt like a win for him, really. It must have felt like a win for everyone. <sighs> Well, yeah, well, I, I think I think for Wisey, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was Leicester, they were a good side, so you'd always have to, you know, you want to do well against these sides, he's already losing against them. But I think Wisey, after giving it to their bench, he couldn't have walked off that pitch <laughs> and seen them, because they would just been buzzing off them, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that was that. So Wisey's like, uh, made up, everyone's made up, Matty's happy, we've got to draw that out of it. I'm fucking happy because I've redeemed myself because I've thrown one or, well, fucking, definitely through the first one, I can't quite remember the second one. got to mention that, go on. <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, at least you know, it, it, you know, it, you know, tell me fair and all that. So uh, yeah, um, I'm happy. I'm happy that I've redeemed myself. So anyway, goes in the changing room. Like you said, it feels like a win. So on the Monday morning now, I walks into the changing rooms, and there's like a bottle of 
Lauren Perrier Rose just sitting. There he is. So I'm looking still at him. Yeah? Still there. Still not I'm still untouched. Still untouched. Look at that. I From mean, Dennis I Wise, yeah? Obviously, like, I, just just so I always remember not to open it. I've got the little I wrote on it Wisey, like and the date and all that. Oh, decent. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, the 16th of November 2002. That's how old that is. So, oh, um, it's looking fucking dusty as anything. So, um, yeah, so it's sitting there. It's sitting there, me spec. I'm thinking, what's that doing there? So, oh, it's a fucking lovely gear, that, you know what I mean? And why has yeah. he come walking in? And he said, tell you what, son. He said, if that if they just scored that penalty, I couldn't have left the house all weekend. He said, so that's for you, that. He said, because you, you fucking saved my life. It's a oh, nice one. Cheers, why is he? So, Fuck there it is. Reason. Cheers, why is he? <laughs> when he took over as manager, again, like, I don't know if you go back to the Eiffel one, but Eiffel said, um, nothing changed. He was still out of view on the piss all the time. Yeah. But not like old Dennis can't come out no more. He said, no, he's fucking still there every week on the piss yeah. of us. Yeah, not, not unchanged. And he, he, he still got changed in the changing rooms. That's good. That must be difficult for a manager because you've got to try and find that. And then like some some of them give it that one. Like, you got to call me Gaffer now and all that. And there's some people yeah. going, oh, "Prick's got above his fucking station." Like, it can be a difficult transition. But as good as things were under McGee, as good as things were under Rhino and Macca, McGee took it to the next level. And again, yeah. in my opinion, you've got to look back on the Dennis Wise era and say he achieved some things that will never ever be achieved again at a club. Probably FA Cup yeah. final, European yeah. fucking European run. I know you, you was gone by then, but yeah. Um, what was he? What was he like as as a manager? Like, he, what was his Obviously, had Muscat around him. Muscat yeah. Was, was Muscat, like, I know Muscat was a player, but was he, like, in with Wisey? Is in, there, you got that feeling he was more of a, a coach alongside Wisey. Mate, they were like that. Them two fucking lunatics running your football club. No wonder we've done so well. Mate, they, mate, they, they, were, they were tight as anything. Do you know what? They'd be standing there, like, him, um, Andy Roberts and Wisey would just be, like, the three cogs. We call them the three cogs. They're, like, they're, like you couldn't get in there. Like you'd be like, you couldn't get in there. That's like Adams and Keown back in the day. You just couldn't oh, breach it. Mate, they'd be, they'd be like, they'd be in there, they'd be, they'd be talking, they'd be laughing and all that, and they'd, they'd be fucking buzzing off everybody else. The thing, the thing with Wisey, right? I think the thing with Wisey, the fact that he he didn't change. He knew because he didn't have to. He knew everyone was a was was a good sort. He knew he had a totally solid squad. He knew there was no arseholes. Maybe he had the respect. Slides. Um, and he, it's all he was right because he had the total respect when he played and nothing changed he had the total respect when he became a manager and he didn't have to demand it because he had it um, and, and he, he just he just knew who he had in, in the changing rooms and he knew it kind of it was self-governed um, they were, uh, the vast majority were like young hungry lads um, he, he, he'd done his job really well he brought in Ray Wilkins so he had, he had a good general behind him Everything was running great, you know what I mean? So why is he probably thinking himself, do you know what? I, I'd be very surprised if Wise didn't think to himself, I've landed on my feet here with, with this mob. As, yeah, my, as, yeah, my yeah. First, as my first job, I should imagine it was a very good job because you could see there was no issues, you know what I mean? Um, what was he like, like Ray said, Wilkins? Hey? Wilkins, what was he like, Ray? Oh, mate, he was, he was top draw. Like, it's mad, like, because you had Ray Arthur at the club, you had yeah. Steve Vitt at the club, and then Ray Wilkins come in. Like, you a lot of people on. speak highly of Harford as well. Oh, uh, Ray Harford was like, was top draw. Like, you know, fucking obviously they have to pay them a pass now. But Ray Harford would have you running through brick walls and, and enjoying it. He'd have you running through brick walls and fire and enjoying it. The sessions he used to put on were just absolutely phenomenal. They'd be fizzing mm-hmm. and popping. The lads, it, we, we were lucky. Like, we were lucky. So fortunate to have him at, at, at the world at the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, he'd come in for like two, three days a week. Um, he'd always be off dead quick. He'd be either going to racing or he'd be going to have a little game, a little, little game of golf. Um, but he'd come in and just like sprinkle his magic on it. That, that's probably the good way to describe Ray Arthur. He'd come yeah. in and just sprinkle a bit of magic on the session and on the club. That good as a coach, yeah? Hey? Is it a, that good of a coach? He was that good a coach. Because that like, thing, like, you think back then, people now, you'd think he's more. People like, I'm not saying he's on the level of Ferguson and people like that, but they, uh, Brian Clough, they couldn't survive. You're, like you're saying, his knowledge of coaching, even back then, as an old, as an old school geezer, yeah. was fucking, like, as you said, magic. 
was magic. I mean, you know, he he he'd been at um, Blackburn when Blackburn when they won the league. I remember sitting there with Ray. I think I've I think I've said this to you before, but <clears throat> I remember him saying to us, "This is the best squad I've ever seen." He said, "As far as togetherness is, he said, I've never seen anything like this before." Right, half this, said that, yeah, yeah. And where has he where has he not been? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think and, as well. I, and I'm not just saying it because it's my channel. I think that's what gives this the opportunity to succeed with speaking to you, speaking to us, because it was that good. And it was the best times in your a lot of your careers and it was something special. I think that's why I've covered a lot on the channel, but you, your era I just seem to keep coming back to because it was, like you said, it was something special and not yeah. just you know, for the players, for the fans as well. Sorry, so I, I took you away from, um, from Ray... Ray Wilkins, what was he like once? So he come in obviously after half of the gone with McGee. Wilkins yeah. comes in as, as why is he sort of go to guy, sort of yeah. the overseer of it all. And he was he was a bit before my time to see as a player, but obviously understood how good he was as a player. <clears throat> Sorry, um, but yeah, brilliant coach and all, yeah, yeah, he was superb. Like again, just really thorough. Um, wouldn't leave any stone unturned. His knowledge of the game was like was top top draw. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, you can't remember. He's played in Italy in like the eighties, like when it was a. Fuck me, he did, didn't he? Played for AC yeah. Milan, didn't he? Played for AC Milan, yeah. yeah. He was, it was great. Like he, he was sitting there, he'd tell you stories about Berezi and all that. And he's like, you just like, you're lapping it up. You know what I mean? You're sitting yeah, there, you're yeah, yeah. a pasta, and he's telling you about Berezi back in like eighty eight and all that. You just, you just lap it up, and and he said, because they bought him from Man United, and he said he didn't real, he didn't realise how much of a professional footballer you had to be until he went to Italy. And he said, like, you know, I was at Man United, you know what I mean? He said, you know, we were like, we were the big, big stuff and all that. And then he said, and you go to Italy, and then that's how you have to be as a pro. I think you had, like, two and three sessions a day and all that, like, kips in the afternoon, your diet. Yeah, that's where it was. So it will come from, obviously, from abroad, like, all the proper eating and all that, wouldn't it? Do yeah. You know like maybe your your your, um, your 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 thoughts on alcohol and stuff. So you know, be like a glass of wine. Be trusted to have a glass of wine. You do that in England. You wouldn't have a fucking team Saturday morning. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> you wouldn't because you'd just be like take the piss. Um, yeah. So so just all that kind of stuff. But but like the thing, he was he was ten out of ten with his knowledge of football and his coaching ability. But he was actually better as a man management. Is is is, is man- yeah. Oh, like he would have you. That's the thing, though, he, just, he was kicking on a bit then as well. He was an older fella then, so sort of to be able to sort of um, resonate with like the younger crowd and still, you obviously like, had a lot of respect for him. The boys probably yeah. felt part, part of it, even though he was maybe supposed to be distancing himself and he was a lot older, he still knew how to in- interact. You know what I mean? Yeah, he did. But, but I mean, like, you've got to remember, he was probably led by Wisey because Wisey was like right in with us all. So we'd yeah. be getting changed with us all and all that. So, you know, he knew. He's probably come in and thought to himself, "Well, this situation here, I'd have to be distanced from these players because the manager's right in amongst them. They're all good sorts. I mean, anyone who comes into Millwall at that time, you'd, you'd have to be an idiot to not have embraced what we were about. If you come in in any kind of way, shape, or form in, in into the club, into like the management side of it, or if you were a physio, a new physio, or or a kit man or something, if you come in like a bit of a prick, you're just wasting your time because it was all the whole." The whole club was laid on for you. It was open. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. To, to enjoy yourself and to embrace it all. And well, you know, Ray Wilkins wasn't soft, so you know he, he he's come in and he's like, like it'd be, it'd be little, it'd be little tiny things, the things which would just make you feel like Temple Top. You'd walk in and he'd just go, and it was genuine. Like he'd go, tell you what, son, you look fabulous today. So, <laughs> you say, what have you got on there? I told you that when you put the camera on earlier. <laughs> And he'd be going, he'd be going, what's that? He goes, oh, and he'd come up and feel your clothes. He'd go, oh, that's quite cool. look at the quality in that. Really? Yeah. Oh, you like yeah. the clock? Yeah. That's and then yeah. I remember I remember walking in one day into the grounds and he had a suit on. I had this new suit on. And um, it was it was it was a fucking it was a nice suit, you know what I mean? And I've walked in and he's gone, oh my god. He's gone. Now boys, if you want to know how to dress, have a look at him. He said, "Look at that!" He said, "Look at him." You he looked that. amazing. And I'm just, I was like, "Look at him!" <laughs> so I mean, and I thought to myself, like, he just made you feel absolutely brilliant. And yeah. did, like, so look, the thing is, he liked the, he liked the fine things in life. You know, we had like, he'd always dress immaculately. Yeah. Um, he'd always smell great. 
he'd always there's one thing I always remember about him. It was a bit like on um you seen the film Casino where yeah. he would put his um his shirt and tie on and then he'd leave his trousers off and he'd have his shoes and socks on. And he'd walk <laughs> around so his so his kicks didn't have a crease in them. When he's walking out that door, his kicks were sharp. But he's not that mentally, do you know what I mean? No, but uh, this is this is fucking great. This is what I, like we, we love to hear stuff like this. Like, yeah, as good as good as he was as a player, as good as he was as a coach. You're saying like from a personal experience, what his personality was like, and how fucking like the way he dressed. I can imagine he smelled amazing. I can imagine how good he smelled. And all. He was brilliant. And like, <laughs> he, he was very rarely have a cross word. He never swore. He never ever swore. It was always gentlemen. Um, he, he, he called you gents. Obviously, always please p's and q's and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Always respect everybody. He was like, he was just a gem. Again, you got these people who got nothing to prove. So why come into been there and done it all? When he's been there and done it all, so yeah, been he's there and done it all. So why are you going to come in and be like a prick to, to lads who need to learn, who want to learn? It's almost more of a, it's almost maybe more enjoyable for him to come in and teach young books the old the old tricks mm-hmm. and like and then, and then watch it come to fruition on, on on the park. Like you know, you may have got a bit more joy out of us. Than maybe a big senior Chelsea squad, maybe because you're going to get more gains out of us. Yeah, he's going to tell us new things. He might be able to it's tell like, us. It's like, it's like a bit of a project for him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. And, and and he got he got the, the top respect. I remember two, I remember two instances, really funny instances on the training ground. And um, I think I can't remember who it was. I think it was Livermore, but I can't remember Livermore taking corners. But we we were doing we were doing a corner setup, and um, whoever was putting it in. He had to. We had to kind of pull people around, make dummy runs and all that. And I used to get Sadler running about eight yards out, bang, and just crash in the head like that, right? So then we're all standing there, and whoever it is has put the first one in, like stuck it over the bar. Second one hit the near post. Third one overcooked it. He's gone. Listen, he's gone. You know, you've got one more chance. If you don't stick it in, I'm going to come and show you how it's done. So <laughs> All right then. Anyway, so the pressure's on whoever whoever it was now. The pressure's on. They just fucking folded. They just collapsed. <laughs> just like duffed it into the floor or something. So he's got his he used to always have like a clipboard. So he's put his clipboard down and he's walked up, just stood there like had his had like his copers on or something. And just fist it right on the money. Sat like the lads have kind of, you know, made near post runs, pull the people out and that. Sadler's come in like a freight saying, bang! Right in the top corner, <laughs> and it's gone. I should stick them in there like that for um, for Celes. No QPR. <laughs> so if we're all screaming, it's gone. Like what? What can't this man? What, what can? What can he not do? Do you know what I mean? So especially, especially and, to call it as well. Go. I'll have to do that for you in a minute if you don't sort it out, mate. Mate, exactly. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like it just just shows you. Like you know, it, it was just it was just tops up. So then another instance now. This is uh, when Andy Marshall was was at the the, the club. And I think I had just I just come back from my first injury, so it was just before like the West Ham game, and uh, we finished training. There's a ball just sitting about three or four yards outside the area, just on the edge, just on on the side of the D. And um, and Ray's just finished training, walking in with his clipboard, so we're just kind of standing there. And Andy Marshall went, "Go ahead, Ray, what have you got there?" So he's gone, "Okay." She just put his clipboard down. And Andy Marshall just like, you know, stood in goal, set up and all that. And he's going, you ready? He's going, yeah. And he just fucking whipped it up and down. It weren't even a wall, but he's whipped it up and down, <laughs> right into the near top corner. Andy Marshall's flung himself, scrambling, <laughs> ended up in the net. We were just creased up on the side like that. Are you fucking for real taking him on? Do you know what I mean? Oh, my God. And again, picked up his clipboard. I walked away. I think he just said, "Like, come on, mate. Oh, it's he just, sound, he just sounds like one cool bastard, even like." Oh, yeah, like yeah. Cool. Do you know? No, another thing as well. Do you know another thing he's done as well, right? Which, which was fucking top draw. I mean, listen, listen to this. He um, he said to us, "Who wants a Rolex Daytona?" Do you know, like when Daytonas are just like two and three year waiting list, Andy, you know, and all that. Yeah, yeah. He went. Who wants? He said, "I've got a fella there." He said, "He wants one." So I like, have one. And like everyone, you must have got about six. You think he said there's about six or seven in the offering. If you want one, you can have one. God, it's done like that. <laughs> like raise that. the go, raise the go-to guy on anything oh. needed. So, what was it like on um on match days? 
was it sort of good cop, bad cop with Wise and, and Wilkins? Well, Wilkins would be, you know, well, bad cop. Like, te- like team talk just before, I know like prep during the week, different things get said, but right before kickoff, you know, an hour, an hour before, do they, is it, what, what's, what's the sort of um, take on, on their, their, their approach to it? Just information, do you know what I mean? Like, like they didn't need to be, you know, if, like I said, if anyone was the bad cop, it was probably Wisey. Like, mm. Sometimes Ray had to probably rein him in a little bit. Uh, if he if he kind of lost his head at, at times, but, did he did he look? Could he lose his head? Why is he like in a pre match yeah. gentle? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. But you know th- that's what it's about. The thing the thing is with our team was right. Like you would you would just take it on the chin. You, you generally it, wouldn't be getting stick unless you deserved it. Yeah. You wouldn't get stick unless you deserved it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and if you deserve it, you deserve it. You've got to take it on the chin. So that that was that's generally my. My outlook on, on on life, do you know what I mean? Um, they were they were very they were very very fair. So you know, if you had the shit out, you get fucking told. Yeah, we wouldn't. You, you know, there was no picking on anyone, or anything like that. There was, there no, was no I was, I, I say, watching from, from watching other podcasts, you, you find that a lot of footballers say on these other podcasts, as long as the people are honest with you, then that's fine. Yeah. If, you, if you're not fancy at the club, they'll tell you, and that's it's just when people when people do bullshit you, you know, and, and yeah. string or whatever, then that's that's. That's the that's the worst thing. Do you know what I mean? The worst situation. The other day, I said to wife, I said, if you're running down the wing and you're sick of the crossing, you've got. I mean, again, like just from that era, the, the forwards we had. If you had to name like the top twenty forwards or top ten forwards in my lifetime, five or six of them will probably come out of that era. Yeah. Sadly, uh, Harris, Moody, Claridge, and again for a short while, Dublin. Yeah. And uh, Eiffel said that he was probably the best of them all. Sads. Yeah, I think he was. He was like, he was one who was destined to go on to, to big things. He was just. He was, was just he was, he was such a big lad, you know what I mean? He had lovely, he had a lovely touch on lovely control, mm. really aggressive, great in the air. So you know I mean like like if, if you're like you said there, if you're looking to whip a cross in and like for, to, for it to drop on anyone, sadly he's your man, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He he just got he just go through and like just like take them over like skittles and he, he was he was he was boss. He was a really, really, really good player. Really good player. I think him um, Sunderland put a a really big bidding for him. It was like, like I, 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 my memory was you know, McCarthy like, their manager. I know. Eh? Was it McCarthy? Was their manager Mick McCarthy? I'm not sure. Trying to share. Sure, it might have been with the old Irish yeah, connection. But I remember yeah. someone telling me it was about seven million quid. Okay, like now. In, in like 2001, 2002, and then his um, he had a hip problem, which put paid to that. And then I think. Mm. Fucking you know, obviously he had to retire the back of that. Fucking but, shame, mate. Right, like sadly and, and Alice, they were, they were just a top draw partnership, you know what I mean? And you was there for the 2004, you know, the 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 Mother's Day massacre. Yeah. The FA Cup final, but you missed it due due to injury. Mm. Um wasn't it fucking Chris Sutton's brother that injured you or something like that? The weirdo, John <laughs> yeah, Sutton. John Sutton, yeah, yeah. Fucking soft. <laughs> Yeah. So, like that must have been as good as your time of been at Millwall. What, what what's that like? Like sitting out and having to miss that. That must have been fucking tough. Well, it was early. I think he he'd, um, he injured me in about the f- about the March or so. I think about the March. So mm. there was a long time to go. You know what I mean? Before like you know, I wouldn't even think about the FA Cup, for, Cup final. We were we were still in the cup. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I was I was <laughs> I was walking to the bar. I had a fractured knee. You know what I mean? I didn't need yeah. that. I didn't need that. That had two parts. Um, that was my main concern. Um, yeah, you just think challenging training. You just think about getting fit again and getting sorted because that's yeah. like such a big part of that dressing room as well. Like you sort of, when you're injured, are you not really involved? You're sort of on the fringes. Although people say oh, we want to keep you involved, it is probably tough when you know they're travelling the games and you're fucking sitting on your ass. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it is a little bit tough, but you know, you always make sure and get yourself in and have a little look around and you know, and, and, and you know, keep amongst it all. Move, um, mate, move Matty Lawrence's bottles about a little bit just for old time's yeah, sake. Yeah, just shift them around for a little bit. <laughs> no, but yeah, look, you know, I, I, I felt, listen, I felt I, I was much of a part of it as it could possibly have been. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're, 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 uh, like you're, very, you're a very positive person anyway, aren't you? We can see other people in that situation sometimes when they go under, do you know what I mean? Yeah, mate. Do you know what, right? You've got your glasses got to be half full, and you know there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about mental health at the minute and all that. And yeah, yeah. you know I'm lucky enough not to have been kind of um, 
caught up in that or or felt felt the the touch of it, I suppose, however you want to fucking address it. I don't know, do you know what I mean? But yeah. like like when I like you know, when I when I done my knee, I was <clears throat> I was it was it was in um like it was in about the March, my contract was run out in, in the, the end of the season. And I'm thinking, I've got to be fit for pre season. So I just threw the kitchen sink at it. I was never off the bike um, when I was allowed on it. I was doing every bit of fitness work I could possibly do. Because mm. I thought to myself, do you know what? If I'm not fit for pre season, I'm out of contract. You can almost effectively be retired. Because I was, I was 30 then. I was just mm. 30. And I'm thinking. You're, you're, you're actually, I will get onto this later. You're actually, well, as later as we can, we need two hours in. You're actually technically not still retired. You're still a player, but we'll get onto that later. Remind me. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, kind of. Um, <laughs> well, you are. You're well, still registered as a player. Um, I think I was last season. I'm, I'm oh, past yeah. the PFA still, do you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. we're all right to the minute. We've we got, we got ample goalies. Um, but, yeah, you think to yourself, like, I'm, I'm going to be 30. It was like 30, end of the season, May. And I've got a bust knee. I'm out mm -hmm. of contract. Like, what are you going to do? Do you know what I mean? And but the thing was, like Millwall, um, Millwall was still trying to get me to sign, even in, even in deep into the summer. Yeah, they were still trying to get me to sign. But like, I, I was, I was just positive. I was gonna, I was gonna get get myself fit and just readdress it at that point. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like we were saying about earlier when people don't realise, like, uh, nice might sound a little bit stupid, but it's, it's reality. Uh, it's brilliant to be a footballer, but everything that comes with it, do you know what I mean? Like, that's actually it's your job. You've got to fucking get a contract. You're going to be out. You're yeah. going to be out of work. Do you know what I mean? You've got a fucking family to feed and whatever. Yeah. So people don't think. I think some people don't think about that sometimes. Do you know what I mean, you're you're planning to keep yourself in a fucking job. Sure, you? you're out, and, Training you know, to get like, fit to get yourself a new contract to stay in a job. True. And you know, it was like it was like twenty years, you no, know, twenty eighteen years ago. Actually, mm. no, when eighteen years ago what was it? No, it was sixteen years ago. But you know, you the know. money. Then we're what it is now, and it's not about money, but you know, you know, it keeps you afloat, I suppose. But um, you know, like you think to yourself, I'm going to be thirty. The thing that worried me the most was ending up somewhere I didn't want to be. That was the that was my main worry. So I'm thinking to myself, right, okay, Millwall has still got something on the table, but you know, we're still negotiating that. Um, there was Cardiff were, were on my case. They were they were quite hot for me really, do you know what I mean? Mm. So I asked it, that was on obviously on the providers that I was fit. But if those things fall through and you end up at say, I don't know, like a I don't know, like Forest Green or something. Do you know what I mean? No, something like that. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Like somewhere where you, you just don't want to be. And there's gonna be a big different difference in Dodo and all, do you know what I mean? It is. And plus well, just you know, I I'm, I'm a positive person. I'm a positive person, but fuck me, it can only take you so far. And do, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking to myself, yeah. if I have to say move somewhere where I don't want to live and being in a team I don't want to be at, especially having been in this team, which is such a was, was such a great um, experience and, and uh, camaraderie and all that, like, you could end up, like, kind of um, just just having, having, a, having a bad end to your career. Yeah, exactly. Um, so so, so that, that was the thing that got me up in the morning. Um, swimming, I'd be, I'd be in the, I'd be in the swimming pool at like half past six in the morning, doing the lengths to get myself, get, get my strength up. Um, being there till like you know till four o'clock. Like when you're injured, you're in early and you're out late. You're out till like mm. half four, five o'clock sometimes. By the time you finished all your physio, so mm. you know it needs to be done. You want to get back fit. You got, you got to put the hard work in. Well, you did, and it did work because um, eventually it accumulated in you leaving me a wall, but. They offered you a contract. You've, you've, mm. you've definitely, we've definitely heard this one before, but I just, it's just for someone like me who's a fan, it's just the weirdness of real life. Yeah. That you like at the wedding, like you're having a piss. What, what happened? Just tell us the, the story. Like, you think the footballers, you think on the football pitch, you don't think of the, the other stuff that goes on yeah. off of it. And you're at Dennis Wise's wedding. Yeah. Having a piss when you're something like that. I'll let you tell the story. Well, I was, I was, I was sitting there just minding my own business, like at the table, and then. Um... Um, it was Theo's son called me and said, "Like my dad wants to wear you outside." So I goes outside, and I've been kind of keeping it from them the fact that Cardiff were on me. So some man standing there with Theo and Wisey, some man standing there with a big smile on his face, 
Theo and Wazzy aren't looking best pleased. And <laughs> Theo's going, like, what's this? He's telling me you're going to sign for him. And he's going, he's coming to us. We're going to take him to the promised land and all that. And, <laughs> and, all, and all this and all that. And Theo's going, don't be going, don't be going signing down here to Cardiff. It's miles away. He wants to live in Cardiff and all that, blah, blah, blah. Um, so why is he, to be fair, it's his wedding day, do you know what I mean? And he's like, kind of... <laughs> He isn't really saying first, too much. It's the first start for contract negotiations with you. I know. So he, he's not saying too much. He's just kind of mediating in the middle. So those two are kind of going at it, saying that the, the, each one is going to finish higher in the league and they're putting a bet on and all that. Um, so then, yet yeah, later on in the night, when, when the, the sun had gone down, um, I'm walking towards the to the pisser and Theo just steps out from the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, listen. He goes, don't sign for him. Sign, sign back on and I'll, I'll increase your, your appearance money something like that it was and I went, look the basic isn't changing and their basic is a lot more and he's going um, just come on just don't go to them don't go to them and I was like ah, look just you know I said I don't even want as much I don't want as much of you as they're offering but you've got to come a little bit further away than what you're offering at the minute you know what I mean yeah and then it just it, it just it wasn't it didn't fall through then it just kind of fell through like maybe a week or so later, or a couple of weeks later. So you, you your know. contract in the end, I can't remember. Did your contract just it just expire at me, or when you just joined? Just expired, yeah, yeah. Just expired but then, you then you, but then what happens is you go you go into Cardiff then <clears throat> with an untried broken knee with a couple of screws in it, and um, and, like a, and a dodgy neck, and you think to yourself, like if this falls through, we're gonna go. It was like yeah. it was it was a few it was a week or so into pre season as well, I think. So you kind of listen. It, it, it's a gamble, do you know what I mean? And you know, yeah, you, 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 you left Liverpool first time, first club round was me. Well, it worked out fucking brilliant. Yeah, you know, chances are next time it, it wouldn't have done. And you did you regret leaving? Uh, in hindsight, you can't really have any regrets. But in hindsight, looking back, do you know what? Right, um, I, I didn't want to go. I don't know what it was. I'm like, I don't want to be kind of seen as as a, as like a mercenary or greedy or not. Because I'd say what I I love Millwall. I've loved yeah. no club more than Millwall ever. Do you know what I mean? No, um, I, I know, and I know that, and I, I know you're not just saying that. I know that's true. You yeah, fuck it. That, that, that's true. Always ring me up, asking how they're playing, asking the results, what's going on in the club. You love it, didn't you? Yeah, I do. But what it was is they just, they were just. I felt they were just shortchanging me, and, and that was it, really. Do you know, it's like not personal. You know what no. I mean? It's like okay, fine, and and, and that was that, and um, and then you know, I went to I went to Cardiff and spent a year there. I mean, retrospectively, looking back. I didn't really have a good time there because, look, I was still injured. Um, I'd have probably got a, a bit more grace at Millwall because you go, right, OK, you know, we, we've, if we just re-signed at Millwall, I might have been ready to begin the season. They might have played whoever else, Willie, I don't know, whatever. And then you would have to got your spot back, which you probably would have been comfortable of doing. But um, when you go to a new club and you, um, you're, um, you're, 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 you're knocking the, the face and keeper off his post and then... You played against them quite a few times and put in quite a few yeah. good performances, and then you're turning up maybe the performances I was straight away they're on you, and probably because I've come from Millwall as well. The, the, yeah, the I, had, I, I had no grace at all, um, and you know what? Like we saw, it's it's a jungle out there. It's the way it is. You, you know, yeah, you don't yeah. anything. So I went there. I, I didn't perform particularly well, um, and the difference was as well coming from Millwall with the camaraderie and the togetherness that they had. They didn't have that at Cardiff. So, TW, always a pleasure to speak to you, mate. You are a Mill legend and um, you're, you're a top man. I love speaking to you, as always. Top man, mate. Appreciate you. Yeah? Nice one. Stay safe up there. Come on, you Lions. And you as well. Well done, mate. Cheers.